Hello, my name is Stephanie and I have never met a buddy read that I've said no to. So I'm gonna spend this week getting through my buddy reads, but the really positive thing about this is this would also count as a Spookopoly video because all four of the buddy reads that I'm choosing to focus on actually like count towards all my prompts. All four of these books count towards my prompts. So we have Gleam, which is the third in the Plated Prisoner series. I literally just uploaded a video where I was reading the second one in the Plated Prisoner series. I was reading it with Robin, but Robin and I just happened to decide we were gonna read this whole series together. So she has already started this one, so I need to get on it and I need to start it tonight. As for Spookopolathon, this actually counts for a KU read because this is still on KU even though I have a physical copy of it. It is a KU read, so I'll probably read this on my Kindle or I'm just gonna listen to it on audio while I play Animal Crossing. And then I have Model Home, which is a buddy read with some of my patrons. It's like an impromptu buddy read. This is also my five-star prediction for Spookopolathon on, which is hilarious because I actually am not rating books anymore. I have decided to stop rating books because I think it's just like too subjective and I've been having a lot of fun just telling you what I like and don't like about books and not having to put a numerical value to it. And then I have We Used to Live Here. This is also a Patreon buddy read. This is actually for the entirety of my Patreon. So I'm hosting a month long spooky readathon and this is the optional group pick, but a bunch of people have already picked it up and they were loving it. And so I was feeling a lot of FOMO and I wanna pick it up as soon as possible. So <laughs> I was going back and forth about starting We Used to Live Here and Gleam today, but I don't know if I can handle this at night because people were saying it's like the creepiest book that they've ever read and it actually creeped them out. I don't know if it's a good idea for me to do that because I'm a big scaredy cat and I will have nightmares. I will absolutely have nightmares. So I'm gonna save this for the daytime. And lastly, I have Air by Subba Tahir. So if you don't know, I love The Ember and the Ashes. I know a lot of people don't like The Ember and the Ashes Quartet. I absolutely loved it. It is a five star, maybe six star series for me. And Jared, my partner, also really loves Ember and the Ashes. I got him into it when the third book was published. And ever since then, we've buddy read these books together. So Air, while not technically part of the quartet, it is set in the same world. And one of the main characters in here is the nephew of a main character in the Ember Quartet. I don't really know what to expect from this series, but I'm very excited. And Jared and I are actually starting this tomorrow because we are going apple picking tomorrow. So I was like, wouldn't it be cute if we started the audiobook together on the car ride there because it's going to be like an hour and a half there and back so i will be starting this tomorrow as well um this one could count as a five star prediction as well but it also can count for a mood read oh and i'm also counting we used to live here as a mood read so this is what i'm trying to tackle this week i doubt that i'm gonna finish all four but at the very least i do think that i could finish three books i'm gonna go start gleam and play some Animal Crossing or possibly Zelda because I am very obsessed with the new Zelda game. And I will talk to you tomorrow when we go apple picking. Picking, 
but it turned out that they only had raspberry picking. Also, if you hear something in the background, Jared is cleaning the car. <laughs> we're getting gas right now. But yeah, anyway, we were gonna go apple picking. We didn't get to. They did have raspberries. I just didn't feel like doing that, but I did get some good stuff. Huh. We got some apples. We got some, some caramel. Caramel. We got an apple slushy, apple sidey donies. Nope. What? Well, that's like the whole thing. It was a good time. <laughs> Hello, it's me reporting live from my bed because I am exhausted. I'm so tired this week. Don't know why. I've actually been sleeping through the night, but it's because I'm so tired. But I sleep and I remain tired. So what's the science behind that? What's the science behind that? So yesterday, before we went apple picking, I did do some sprints for Becca's Bookopolathon. Spookopolathon? I keep calling it the wrong thing. Um, it's the spooky version of the Bookopolathon, which is Becca's Readathon. If you don't know anything about it, I'll link it all down below. I am now exactly 300 pages in. So I'm on chapter 19 and I'm liking this. It's so far not my favorite. Like I didn't get into it as easily as I got into Glint. I mean, I love this world and I like these characters and I'm just so fascinated by where things are gonna go. But so far, the things that are happening, the characters that we're like spending a lot of time with, I'm not enjoying as much. And there's quite a lot of mental abuse and like manipulation in this one that we have seen before. The first book feels like the most intense in terms of like, the sexual assault that you see on page and like the abuse that you actually see on page but this one is more like a mental abuse than a physical one that we were seeing in the first book and it's really weighing on me not that the first book didn't weigh on me i've talked about it before that i was so surprised that i even wanted to move on with the series because usually i don't love books like this like dark really dark romances. This is kind of opening my mind to that because I do think that this will probably have a really great character arc, but it's just like right now, the emotional manipulation and the characters that we're spending time with and like the way they're interacting, it's just like really weighing on me. <laughs> so I just feel I'm struggling a little bit with this book and I have a feeling it's probably not gonna be my favorite. I've refrained from reading reviews before going into these books because I'm just afraid to get like any types of spoilers. This is one of the few series where when I read it, I'm literally just vibing. I'm not making predictions. I'm not guessing where anything's going. I'm just like vibing and going with the story because I know there's gonna be twists and turns. So I have not read reviews, but I have seen like the the star rating for this series and it progressively gets higher with each book which I think is pretty typical because obviously if you didn't like the first book you're less likely to move on with the second one and so on and so forth but yeah this one has a pretty high rating so I'm gonna guess I'm gonna hope that maybe the second half of this just like gets better for me it's not that I'm disliking it it's just that I'm liking it less than what I have been reading of this series but what scares me is there's some more POV additions into this book and I'm not the biggest fan of those as well. So that's another thing that kind of scares me is if we're gonna continue on with these POVs, will I like the rest of the series? I don't know. Also, if you don't know what this series is, this is the third book in the Plated Prisoner series. The Plated Prisoner series is a King Midas retelling. The tale of King Midas is that everything he touches turns to gold. And so in this series, we are following King Midas's favored concubine and he has turned her gold. And so everybody is very intrigued by her and he's kind of obsessed with her. And so in the beginning of the series, the first book being Guild, he kind of breaks her trust for the first time ever. So for many years, he has protected her from whatever she was running from, which in this third book, we are getting concrete answers about what she was running from. So our main character, Oren, literally trusts him with her life. And in the first book, that starts to crumble. This trust between them starts to crumble because he puts her in a position that she feels is dangerous and that he's using her as a pawn. And this is the first time that she's starting to see cracks in the foundation of their relationship. So that's the start of the story. Obviously I'm on the third one, so I'm not gonna tell you spoilers about it, which is why I was being vague earlier. I still have hope because Robin did finish this and she said the twist was really good and she definitely wants to move into the next one. And honestly, we have had had pretty much the same opinions and thoughts and feelings about this book. So if she's saying she wants to move on, I have a feeling that I'm gonna like the end of this book. Thank you.
Hello, dear reader. I got home and I immediately just wanted to shower. And so I did. And I feel incredible. I just love showering. I love it. It makes me feel so good. It makes me feel so relaxed. In theory, I hate washing my hair, but I love the feeling after washing my hair. You know what I mean? Like the clean hair feel. I love the feeling. Hate the process. And I hate the drying process. Like I hate wet hair. Anyone else like that? I really hate my hair when it's wet and touching me. Ugh. So I finished Gleam. Last time I talked to you, I was kind of just at the beginning portion of this. I don't even think I was even halfway through. And then all day today, I've just been listening to this. I've been addicted to listening to it. And it's really interesting because I wasn't liking this as much. Like I was liking it because I like this series. But compared to the last book, I wasn't liking this one as much. And I actually figured out why when I was talking to Robin about this. It's mainly because there were certain characters that I really, really liked loved in the second book that weren't really a part of this book. And King Midas is like more of a part of this book. We're learning a lot more about him and I just don't care about him as a character. So that was throwing me off a little bit because there are other side characters and King Rot and Oren, even our main character, that I would prefer knowing more about than King Midas. So I think that's why this book struggled a lot for me. But I will say that the second half of this book is so explosive. There are so many plot twists. There was a really great plot twist in here that I did not see coming. Something about this, I just vibe and I listen and I have a good time and the twists always get me and I think the endings are very explosive and just like all of the other books in this series. And I'm sure continuing forward, these all end on cliffhangers. So obviously I desperately wanted to go into the next book. It's funny, I was looking at Goodreads reviews after this because I was so curious how people enjoyed this one, especially with how heavy the content in here is. So so I do want to say that if you're going into the series, just look up trigger warnings because this hits a lot of triggers for people. It's a very dark, dark fantasy romance and it continues to be dark. It's not like it gets lighter. I would say that the sexual assault that was really rampant in the first book starts to go away. Like it's not as prevalent in the plot line as it was in the first book. So I'm glad that that aspect hasn't been a prevalent part of the books, but it's still like alluding to there are still things said she does reference back to a lot of the things that happened in the first book but further there's a lot of emotional manipulation there's a lot of physical abuse and mental abuse there is tons of violence in here and it's often towards women so I think that while this in theory would bother me there's a lot of conversations happening here about women gaining back autonomy in a very patriarchal world and the way this world is set up is very patriarchal and Oren is a character that I think is going to have amazing character growth because I see that she's fighting against a lot of the patriarchal um, things working against her and that she's been raised to believe and I'm really loving this trope and I've said it before I'll say it again I love when a character realizes that their whole world that they've kind of built up in their head isn't what it seems to be and it kind of shatters in front of them when something is exposed and something sort of reveals all the cracks in this foundation and so Orin is really experiencing that and so this third book really is her world kind of shattering around her and her starting to come into her own as a character and I think that's what I'm most excited for is to see her really come into her own and to see what kind of character arc she's going to have because we've seen a pretty big character arc so far with her by the end of this book which going back to people saying that this was their favorite book I think that's why I think it's because we start to see the biggest shift in Oren in this book so far and it's very obvious that it's going to continue to shift is that gonna be good or bad? I don't know. I don't know if she's gonna be a morally gray character or if she's gonna be like a hero type character. I don't know and I'm excited to see. So disappointingly, none of the rest of the audiobooks are out for this series. I think the fourth one does come out in the beginning of November. If I remember right, it was like November 18th or something. I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to wait that long. So I'm probably just gonna end up reading these physically, which is fine because I do really love this world enough. And I think I'm established enough in Raven Kennedy's writing and the world and the characters that her writing won't grate on me as much because I've said it before in other vlogs while reading these books. I don't love Raven 
Kennedy is writing because she has never met a metaphor she wasn't willing to use. And it makes it really hard sometimes to stay focused because I get really lost in her metaphors and I'm like, what are we doing here, Raven? What are we doing? But I will definitely be moving on with the series because I just want to know more about some of these side characters. Some of them do come back in the second half if not the last quarter of this book and we get to see them a little bit more and it made me very excited. So I'm excited to see how much more we're going to get to know about these characters and about this world. The plot, I'm very interested in what we're going to be doing in four more books because I think I've misspoke a few times. I thought this was five books but it's six and somehow I'm missing one of the books. I think I'm missing gold. That actually makes me kind of excited because I was a little bit sad that I would only have two more books, but I actually have three. That also, though, intrigues me about like what more is going to happen with this plot. Because, I mean, this book really starts a catalyst to a lot of things, but it also, I don't know, certain things happen in here that I'm like, where do we go from here? What's next? So anyway, I had a really good time with this one. Robin and I both agree that we are going to be moving on with this series. We both have to read it physically now, which is sad because I really do like the audiobook experience. So yeah, but I'm not going to wait till November 18th. And further, the last one in the series won't even come out till like March of next year. So I'm definitely not waiting that long. Watch, I will wait that long because I'm still get some garbage. this morning I started we used to live here I had a few things at work that I could like listen to an audiobook and do at the same time so I started we used to live here because I'm too afraid to read it at night and what do you mean you let a strange family into your house and how do you start off a book saying Eve the main character the ever cautious Eve and she let somebody into their house and the excuse of it all is that she's a people pleaser I'm sorry I'm a people pleaser and these people would not be coming into my house. My people pleasing only extends so far. Uh, you can't, you cannot tell me she's cautious and then tell me because she's a people pleaser that these people are allowed into her house. And it immediately went off the rails. It immediately was like not a good time. And I'm pretty sure one of the children is a little demon child. I have no evidence of that. That is not a spoiler. But basically that's the book so far is that like we meet this main character Eve and literally the story opens, the doorbell rings. And he's like, hey, this is so weird. This is my childhood home. We're moving away. And I just really want to tour the house. I want them to see the house that I grew up in. And it would only take us 15 minutes. And she's like feeling cautious about it she's feeling like mm, i don't want to do this but she ends up doing it anyway and the first thing she notes huh their car isn't anywhere to be seen my partner's not home hmm i'm gonna pretend like i have to call my partner to get confirmation and then her partner doesn't even answer and instead of just lying it just it happens anyway she's like oh i feel bad a little bit so i'm gonna let them tour this house these people that I don't even know. I can't even confirm that this is his childhood home. This is why horror books feel so unrealistic to me because there's no possible way. There's no possible way. There's a trend of TikToks happening right now where it's like, if I was being haunted by a ghost or whatever, and it's the person seeing the first signs of haunting and then packing up and leaving, and that's the end of the TikTok. That is so funny to me because that is me. I'm sorry, I am not gonna be the person in a horror movie. I'm not. It's, it just couldn't be me. And if the zombie apocalypse happen, I'm out in the street. I'm laying out in the street. It's not, it's not gonna be me. I'm not, I don't have the will to survive that, okay? I'm not gonna have it in me to be a genius of survival, a survivalist, if you will, okay? It's just not gonna be me. Unless I'm with somebody who's like, hey, we could do this together, I've got you. It's just not me, okay? And I don't know how it could be me anyway. All of the accommodations that I need just to fall asleep, what makes me think I'm making it through an apocalypse? Nothing, and that's why in the street, 
okay? This book, wow. I'm excited to see where it goes because everybody in the Discord has been talking about how unsettled they feel, how unhinged it is. But the way that it's starting, I feel like even I need to have a conversation if she makes it to the end. Who even knows? Is she gonna make it? I don't know. I actually have only two hours left of this audiobook, but I think it's a fairly short book in general. So I think I could finish it today. Hello friends, it's another day in my car and I have finally finished We Used to Live Here. I can't lie, I don't have much to say about this book because I guess like I liked it, didn't love it. I wanted to love it even more than I did, especially based on the hype, which may have been one of the issues. I've just been seeing everywhere about how incredible this book is. And it's not to say that it's not. I think that the last 10% of this book was mind blowing. And like, especially the last line of the book, the last couple of pages of this book were really mind blowing. And it just makes you rethink everything that happened. There's also like aspects of Morris code in the book that I need to go back and like, see if I can translate it or find somebody who's translated it online. There are some lines of the book that are in a different language that I probably need to translate. But I like the fact that this was multimedia. So there are inserts of like letters and transcripts and documents that are solidifying certain things happening in this book. But this book is so interesting in the fact that like our main character ultimately is proven to be an unreliable narrator, but at the same time, that can't be proven because there's so many unreliable things within this book and the stories the way they interweave into one another like we don't know what's true we don't know what's false we don't know who's lying we don't know who's making up things it's very interesting it definitely had me questioning everything every single reality up until the very end so i really enjoyed that i have not read house of leaves um and i definitely am not comparing the two books because I know House of Leaves is like this huge undertaking of a book. But I do think that this is kind of trying to do a similar thing in that nothing that you read is what you think it is. It has obviously some multimedia aspects to it. And I think that it relies heavily on things being unreliable and you kind of feeling like you're losing it with the characters. Honestly, that's just based on all of the reviews of both of these books that I've seen and now having read We Used to Live Here. I don't know, it just seems like it gave the same vibes as House of Leaves, but on like a much, much smaller scale. I think I gave a pretty accurate synopsis of this book already, but our main character, Eve, she opens the door to this family and the husband is like, hey, I used to live here and I would love to show my kids around because we're moving away it'll only take 15 minutes and she like kind of tries to say no but she feels really bad she says she's a people pleaser so she ends up letting them in and then the snowstorm happens and they stay the night and from there weird shit keeps happening and we start uncovering layers upon layer about this house and the story and i would say that it is like a haunted house story to a degree but it's overall just like a haunted story like not only is the house seemingly haunted it seems like our main character eve is also haunted and maybe other characters that we're learning about along the way are haunted and i really do love that i'm wondering if this book will like stick with me where I just continue to think about it and it ends up being something that I love more or maybe it's a book that I just needed to read in one sitting unfortunately I had to kind of break this up between three days which sometimes ruins the experience and like the build up to things so I partly think that that's why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling about this book initially so personally I highly recommend reading this in one sitting um, this is one of those rare instances because I made a joke about this in my last video where I was saying Aaron talks about how I love a stupid main character, like I love a dumb main character and that it should be studied. And I'm here to tell you that I broke the mold. Did I just release myself from the shackles of stupidity because our main character in this book actually was irritating me because of how stupid she was sometimes. So maybe I'm free. Maybe I'm free from loving stupid characters or this was the anomaly, I don't really know. But yeah, I feel like I'm gonna have to sit on this one more. Maybe by the end of the video, I'll like give another update about how I'm feeling being away from this book. But right now I'm just feeling like it was good. It's not a new favorite. So my lunch break is almost over. I'm gonna be headed back into work and I'm gonna start model home and I'll update you if I even get into it. I don't know. I don't know what the work day is gonna bring.
Okay, so I know that on my lunch break, I was telling you that I was gonna start model home. And actually, as a matter of factually, I did start it. I'm currently 7% into it, but I was on the desk a lot today because Saturdays we just don't have a lot of coverage. So I do a lot of desk hours, which I'm not complaining about because I do like being able to have something to do all day. And I don't have the ebook for model home. So, I was just like perusing my KU and I forgot that I had checked out Pumpkin Spice and Poltergeist. I started it. I'm loving it. I'm flying through it. I have already been laughing. I already really like these characters. I already like the premise of this. So I think I'm gonna spend the rest of tonight after I edit for a little bit reading that. I think I am. I really want to get through Model Home. Do I think I'm going to be able to get through it in this vlog? Probably not. Like I said, I'm 7% into it and I feel like I don't really have a grasp on what's happening. There are some things that I'm like very intrigued by, very interested in, but I'm not sure that I'm comprehending the story. I don't know if it's me and just being tired and this already feeling like it's going to be a pretty complex familial horror or if it's really just like a matter of trusting the process and that it'll all come together in the end. I don't really know. Am I in the mood for that right now? I don't know. After finishing We Used to Live Here, I kind of just needed something light. So I think starting Pumpkin Spice and Poltergeist was the move. So we meet our main character, Jordan, at the one year anniversary of breaking up with her ex-girlfriend. And we quickly find out that sometime between them breaking up and now her ex-girlfriend did pass away in a car accident. And so she gets really drunk on this anniversary and she summons the ghost of her ex-girlfriend because she is a witch. And apparently in this world, it's not uncommon for witches to just summon the ghosts of their ex-girlfriends or just spirits in general. So Jordan summons her ex-girlfriend and in this interaction, she's kind of talking about how she wanted to say goodbye. She never really got a chance to say goodbye to her. She never really got the closure that she wanted because she passed away and her ex-girlfriend is already very like snarky and funny but one of the things in their conversation that stuck out to me is Jordan asks her do you remember what happened to you that night and Lou her ex-girlfriend is like no I can't remember anything from that day the only thing that kind of sticks out to me is this brunch that I went to and Jordan's like that's so suspicious because they said that you passed away in a drunk driving accident and it just seemed so unlike you. So I'm curious if that's gonna be like a mystery element in this. Like, is there gonna be a little bit of a mystery in this book? I don't really know. But as soon as their little moment of closure comes to an end and Jordan's like, okay, I feel better now and I hope that you feel better and you can pass on, Lou can't leave. And it turns out that when Jordan did her summoning spell, the way that she phrased the summoning means that Lou can't move on until Jordan has moved on and like fallen in love with somebody else. So Lou and Jordan are stuck together and Lou is like, oh my God, I'm going to be like your ghostly dating service and I'm going to help you fall in love. So I can move on and you can move on and we can all be happy. <laughs> so in comes our love interest, Harlow and Harlow is on some hard times right now. So her sister ends up taking her in and her sister owns this cafe in Maple Hollow and Maple Hollow is known to be this sort of like fall spooky destination town and people go there because it gives them the vibes of Halloween town. Well, little does Harlow know that the vibes of this town are not fake. It is a supernatural town and all of the supernatural creatures that live within it are very real. And so she finds this out in the very beginning of the book and she's having a hard time coping with it, but she's just like trying to cope because she needs the help of her sister and she doesn't want to move in with their parents. And Jordan and Harlow have their first encounter because the cafe needs some spices from the apothecary that Jordan runs and they meet and they find each other attractive very early on and it's just very silly and it's very funny. This was exactly what I needed, especially after reading two heavier books because Gleam was very heavy. We used to live here very heavy. So this is really what I needed before diving into another heavy book, which is Model Home. So yeah, that's gonna be my bedtime read and it may keep me up rather late. I may just try to finish it tonight because I feel like I could. I really do.
<laughs> we have so much to talk about, okay? First off, I finished The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives this week. I don't even know if I talked about the fact that I started it, but I finished it, okay? Or did it finish me? Because I was obsessed obsessed. Liz from Museum Grack Reads came to visit. She's here in California visiting some family and she took some time to come hang out. So she came over yesterday and she met Goose and Fitzy. Olive was nowhere to be found and we went book shopping which you would have already seen all of that footage. And then I finished Pumpkin Spice and Poltergeist. Okay so we have so much to talk about. Let's first talk about Liz because she got me so many fun stickers. She has this local bookstore that she talks about all the time and I was saying that like if I ever get the chance to visit her, I'm absolutely gonna go. And she brought some of the bookstore to me. So we have Nowhere Bookstore is Extremely Gay, same. I tried to form a gang, but it turned into a book club, also same. Nowhere Bookshop, Stay Weird, Read More. And then their bookmarks are so cute. So this is Nowhere, but it's a worm. And then on the back, it says, Worm Your Way Into a Good Book. This is very Sid coded. And then the other one says, don't get lost in the clouds, get lost in a book. And there's a little greeting card. Greetings from nowhere. This is so smart and clever. And then we went to two different bookstores. I ended up getting myself some more stickers. I got them some stickers while we were there. We were with um, Christine as well. And so I got them some stickers and then I got myself some stickers. So this one says used in new books. And if this is not blathers from Animal Crossing coded, I don't know what is. I really don't know what is. Like that has to be the inspiration. That has to be the blueprint. And then I got this fantasy sticker because you know I love fantasy so much but I also got this romance sticker because I love the art first off I love the art of all of these but you know what I find myself to be a fantasy and romance slash romanticy reader more than anything else these days which is really exciting but I also got my aunt because every single year we send each other a Halloween card it's both of our favorite holidays and I'm gonna be really honest with you they had a frog one in the same version it's like a pop-up card they had a frog one and that's the one that I really wanted to get but it was sold out and I didn't know if they were gonna get any more in so I wasn't gonna try to get my hopes up so I settled on one that I still think is very cute but I did settle and I need that to be on the record. My aunt does not watch my channel, so this is not gonna be a spoiler. So this is the front, which I think is so cute. Then the little pop-up is so cute. I don't even know if you can tell because of the shiny part, but I just think these are so cute. This is the third year that I've gone with this Treasures brand of card because I love the pop-ups and they're different every single year. So I'm very excited to give that to her. So I need to get that in the mail like ASAP. So she will get it by Halloween. Moving on, before we get into the books, the things that you're actually here for, we'll just talk about the Mormon wives. I don't have a ton to say just because I don't wanna spoil things. I liked learning a lot about like some of their beliefs, but most of them are not practicing. And that was only surprising to me because I initially went into the show thinking that all of them were practicing, all of them were in the church, and that we were gonna get a lot about that particular aspect of them being Mormon. Then the first episode was like, no, we're trying to rewrite what it means to be a Mormon woman. And so I thought this show was gonna be something different. I don't know. I mean, it's really just like any other reality television show about people where it's just like a lot of drama, a lot of people just doing things, going to like all of these events together. But there was an interesting aspect of Mormonism and their religion that was sprinkled in there, but it wasn't as heavy as I anticipated going into this show, but I don't really know. I don't know why I thought that. I think because it is called The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. And I was like, okay, are we gonna be like, heavily talking about Mormonism and like they do, but they don't. Cause I can't say that after watching the show that I even understand anything about their religion other than like the whole caffeine thing, like where they can't drink caffeine or they're not supposed to drink caffeine. So soda is a huge thing or the typical like women being subservient to their husbands, blah, blah, blah. So I can't say that I learned anything about the religion, but I don't know why I would be relying on a reality television show that is starring a bunch of TikTok moms to get that information. Like I should just look it up myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I just thought it was all very fascinating and I did end up liking the show. It was really messy. I don't know, what can I say? I'm a simple woman. 
I'm a simple girl. And then last night, as I was falling asleep, I did end up finishing Pumpkin Spice and Poltergeist. This was only like 200 and something pages, so it was a very fast read, and the writing style also lends itself to read it very quickly. The chapters are very short, and these two characters are so charming. I was right that there is a mystery aspect in here. Lou, who is the ex-girlfriend who's a ghost now, she passed away. We do get to dive into that mystery more about her accident, and that was really fun for me because I kind of was picking up on that in the beginning of the book and then it does become a reality and they are investigating it, which I really was happy about. I ultimately didn't look this up, but I wanted to look it up. This is co-written and I wanted to know who wrote whose perspective because I can't lie, whoever wrote Harlow's perspective, I didn't love Harlow's perspective as much as I love Jordan's perspective. Jordan's perspective, whoever wrote that one is my favorite. Let's just look it up. Okay, so far I can't quickly find out who wrote whose perspective. I'll look further into it later. But yeah, Harlow's perspective was not my favorite perspective. I like Harlow as a character for the most part because I do like the chemistry that Jordan and Harlow have. Obviously because it's shorter, the chemistry and like them falling for each other happens a lot quicker than a regular sized romance, I guess. So if you don't like novella romances because the romance happens so quickly, then I don't know that this will be for you. But I found this really funny. I found all of the side characters along with our two main characters very, very endearing. And I especially think that I like Jordan's perspective because of kind of the complexity that she's going through with Lou and the fact that Lou is still there wanting to move on and Jordan is wanting to move on and Jordan is still going through her grief but it's not necessarily a grieving of their relationship it's more of like not really understanding what happened that night and so the fact that she does get that closure and she does also get to move on and fall in love it's just I liked her whole storyline a lot more I guess than Harlow's but Harlow's was fun because she was finding out that this town was paranormal and the way she just kind of goes with the flow was pretty hilarious um and I appreciated her character for being so um I don't know her character was funny to me because she gets into this really big fight with her sister and her sister kind of says some fucked up stuff in that fight and instead of Harlow getting upset and like saying rude things back to her sister or like trying to flee because she doesn't think her sister wants her around, her sister kind of stops herself and is like, oh, that was really harsh. And Harlow's like, you know what? No, you're not wrong. And sort of tries to see her sister's perspective. So I don't know, she was really interesting because she was so level headed in that way. But she had a nice arc as well, simply because um, she's sort of going through this whole like, she can't hold down a job or a business idea to save her life and she thinks that it's ADHD and so she's sort of exploring like why is everything so fleeting for her and even relationships are pretty fleeting for her but she doesn't want that to be the case with Jordan so she does have a pretty good character arc as well. I think it was just the writing style for her or just the way that her character voice came through was not my favorite, especially compared to how much Jordan's perspective was like really funny to me. I don't know, I just liked the voice, the narrative voice for that one a little bit more. So I'm assuming that the authors split up the character perspectives. That's the only thing that makes sense to me, but I'm not an author and I've never co-written anything because I'm not an author. But either way, I had such a fun time with this and there better be so many more books in this world because for one, I love this town. It's definitely like real life Halloween town. If I could move there, I would. And also the fact that Harlow's sister Willow owns a coffee shop. It's just like, it's themed, it's Halloween themed because of the town is amazing to me because I've said it before, I was a barista for a really long time. And honestly, if I could do that for the rest of my life and also didn't hurt my body, I would do it because it's just so fun slinging drinks. And there's just a lot of really fun side characters. If we don't get a werewolf romance in this world, I will riot. I will write both of these authors and force them to do that for me. Why would they do that for me? I don't know. It really was everything I was hoping it to be. Now, I can't speak to spice and like sex scenes because I skim them for the most part. Like sometimes, I can't lie to y'all, in romances, a lot of the sex scenes make me cringe. I think Lila Sage is one of the few authors so far where I've thought all of her sex scenes have been fun and like exciting to read, but otherwise I, I often skim. 
I do. And you know, I've been realizing more and more lately watching other people's vlogs that that's not uncommon. So thank you for validating me, everyone who also does that. But yeah, I'm gonna have to go look online and see what else they're planning in this world because they have to be. They've definitely set it up in a way where this world needs to be explored more. There's so much more to learn about this world and I want to learn more about this world. So if you're looking for a cozy, quick, little bit spicy, sapphic romance, please go read this. Please go read it. I think you'll have a fun time. I'm glad that I picked it up. It's exactly what I needed because I realized recently that I'm, I'm burned out with horror. I, I still have a few books that I want to read for the rest of the season, especially because I did roll them for my Patreon readathon that I'll probably be reading next week. And I really want to read The Hacienda, but Model Home, I think I'm going to put it to the side because it's just very heavy. It's not only heavy in the horror department, but it's heavy like familial stuff and trauma. And I'm just having a really hard time. I started to recognize during Summerween that when I read a lot of heavy horror books, especially horror books that have a lot of like grief or trauma in them, as much as I love them, I usually end up loving them. But when I read those back to back to back, my anxiety spikes through the roof. Summerween, like I had to quit halfway through because I couldn't read another horror book. And I'm unfortunately feeling that right now. So yeah, I'm gonna have to call it quits on Model Home just because it's heavy in all of the aspects. <laughs> and hopefully a couple other things that I wanna pick up aren't as heavy and I can make it through. Otherwise I may just have to like rearrange what I wanna read this season and be okay with that. Or just continue reading really cute, romances that are set during this time. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me this week. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. Let me know down below what you're reading if you're still in the mood for horror and thriller books during this season. And if you've made it this far and just wanna say hi, feel free to leave a little pumpkin emoji down below and I will talk to y'all next time. Bye friends.